Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. In the observance of the Holy Week celebration, our church, UCCP Cagayan de Oro, will be broadcasting morning devotions every 5.30 in the morning, beginning today until Friday, with hopes that we could be together in spirit and in prayer to worship our God as we begin the day. For this morning reflection, let me read to you the words in Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 to 28. The word says, From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Safety and security is one's desire to gain in life. We human beings, we too, are superior and make sure that safety comes first. We build our houses to protect our family from the bad elements, enclose it with walls and doors to lock and locks to keep away thieves and murderers. One buys insurance and keeps money in banks to assure financial security. One travels on safety-tested vehicles that reduces risks of accidents. We choose to eat nutrient-safe diets for better health. People institutionalize a system of national defense to keep the peace. We also build hospitals and health care centers in cases one gets sick, one improves retirement and pension system for hassle-free old age. We people ev even build chains and prisons to keep lawless elements at bay. One pays dearly for these amenities to assure safe and secure life because we value life dearly. It would sure come as a shock to hear the Lord teaching us, whoever wants to save his life shall lose it, but whoever loses his life for me shall find it. Many among us would probably react, what is this Jesus talking about when he said those words? But then the Lord also adds, adds to say, what profits a man if he, gains, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Surely the Lord must be telling us something better than what we know about life. In truth, life as we know it, it fails in comparison to the life that the Lord promises to us. In this life, we have become over-occupied with material comfort and security as if this world is our eternal abode. We forget that we are just passing through here. If we could remember the parable of the rich fool who kept filling his barn only to die the next day. Let us remember that the Lord does not advocate discarding altogether our material, possess our material possessions or oblige us to drink from His cup. Jesus is teaching us to surrender our lives to God and yield to His power. 
Jesus came to this world with practically nothing. He got no decent home and thinks of the birds in the sky as better than him because they have nests to rest their heads on. He carries no pack nor needs any. He does not worry where to get the next meal with his 12 friends for a company. As everywhere they go, people welcome them to their homes. Jesus did not fear not the conspiracy of religious and political authorities that watches his every move. He carries no arms, no knife, not even a nail cutter as he travels perilous territories. He has no need for, us, for an SSS or a pension plan. He knows his time is too short. Jesus traveled with no money or credit cards. What for? Diba? All the basic security that Jesus needed, he got from only one source, and that is from his Father. Jesus tells us that the best way to save our life is to surrender it to the Father. Jesus' life is no different from many youngsters or out-of-school youth who also have no job and no money whose only source for ATM. Only source is through ATM. Kabalo ba mo sa ATM? Aitama. Ba? ATM stands for Aitama or give me some money, mama. Total sur surrender or submission to the Father means to be one with the owner of the world to be one with the owner of the universe it's like living with someone who knows your past your present and your future and beyond the future it is having someone who owns life takes it and give it back again and this is all that jesus ever needs in life christianity has taught us to surrender everything to the father and he will return it several folds back. Job lost everything in his life, including his loved ones. But he got several folds in return. Abraham offered his only son, but he became the father of many nations. Jesus offered his life, but find it back in the resurrection. So it should not come as a surprise at all. If the Lord will tell us, whoever loses his life shall find it, because this is the truth. We find it, Jesus made these conditions very empathically. If anyone wants to walk after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Self-denial here is a necessary condition for the Father the control of our lives for if our self is full where will the father find himself with us we must first empty ourselves so that the lord can take in and control in our lives having done this one must take up his cross also in mathematics the cross is actually a plus sign what Jesus meant when he asked us to take up our cross is to bear our burdens towards growth and progress. God has called us to become productive and to experience the fullness of our life. The burden of the cross is actually is like having an exercise, physical. Physically, we exercise to strengthen our muscles. Spiritually, we take in all the hatred, the pains, the sufferings, the trials and temptation to strengthen the divine spark in us and make it strong as we come to live what we learn from being the disciples of Jesus. Now, friends, in our celebration of this Holy Week, may we remind of our calling to deny our self-interest, our wants, our self-desires, and be in humble submission to the will of the Lord. So we ask ourselves this week in our reflections, in what manner that we have taken the cross to follow our Christ.
Yet, we come to confess, for we understand little, that in that space of a week, our shouts of praise will turn into shouts of mockery. We understand little, for we do not understand ourselves. You sent to us, Jesus, to bring the message of life, the message of love, healing, restoration, and forgiveness. And we kept our ears away from listening to your truth. Instead, boast ourselves with what we have done and what we have become. Forgive us, Lord, for making it too difficult to live out the love you have shown us. Help us in our great need of your presence every day. Hear us, Lord, when we seek your power to change us. We need a change in our mind and a change in heart. Inspire us the mind that is in Christ, who humbles himself and his obedience, who will be faithful to your will. Help us, Lord, to free our hearts from everything that causes its pain. Enable us to free ourselves that we may meet the fullness of life that you desired us to have. We thank you, Lord, for everything. In Christ's love we pray. Amen.